Good morning, everybody. It's Carla Nicole, your coach here. I wanted to talk today about the lies we tell ourselves. It's very important we talk about this because if we don't, we're going to continue to tell these lies to ourselves and we're going to continue to have the outcome and the uh, situations we have because we do not want to admit that our lies are really costing us our peace uh, and costing us our, you know, supreme life that we should be trying to have. So welcome everybody. It's Carla Nicole. I want you guys to get this. This is very important. We tell ourselves a lot of lies. Here's the thing. I am very big about being honest, not just with other people, but it is essential that I am honest with me. <laughs> Period. I've got to be honest with myself. So prime example, I'll put it out there. You know, I had moments in time where I was trying to decide um, what do I need to do to change or fix my financial health? What do I need to do to do that? And how do I do that? Right? So I'm like, okay, well, I really like my, my, uh, nonsense or do I really want to change it? And I did. I got to the point where I was tired of my financial health looking the way it was looking. And, um, so I also wanted to see, well, not only my financial health doesn't look as good as I think it should, what can I do about it? Or is it everybody else gets to have a better life and I don't? That's victimhood thinking. When we think, well, someone else has a better life, someone else has the better home, somebody else has a better job or whatever, what have you, and we sit back in our, in our, in our victimhood and sadness thinking, well, you know, actually, I just have what I have because I don't want to own the fact that I'm miserable with what I have. Listen, it is important that we sit down and we really get serious about what we have power to change. I have a group called Teachable Moments, and I, and I pull my group often. I ask them questions like, hey, do you know how to save money? A lot of people will say, well, I don't have a lot, you know, with what I have now. So I'm struggling financially now. How do I save when I don't have any money to really even make ends meet right now? Okay, are you going to continue to just say that is your truth? Or are you going to start making changes and making a difference in how things are looking for you? The only way we can do something different and have a better outcome is by making a difference and changing how we see things. It's not everybody else. You can as well make a difference in making decisions that's going to benefit you. It just takes you to be honest with you. But remember, I always give you guys self-love acts. Here's self-love act take six. I'm sorry, take eight. Self-love act take eight is stop lying to yourself I'm gonna say that again stop lying to yourself if someone asks you right now what is your credit score are you embarrassed to tell them what it is if someone asks you are you able to financially sustain yourself are you able to say yes without any question or are you struggling financially or are you struggling financially these are things we don't want to own we don't want to admit it we don't want to say well I'm actually struggling financially and I really don't want to seek to find out how to fix it some of us love our misery that is going against love of self people if you really love you you're not going to allow yourself to live in misery or live in lack first of all there's so much out here you could be gaining financially just by being and rubbing shoulders with certain people and doing things differently and changing your mindset that you cannot acquire certain wealth you cannot acquire certain financial gains you cannot all the can'ts you tell yourself is what's hindering you from making a better life for yourself am i making sense to you as long as you sit stagnant and thinking that, well, I'm just a victim, I'll never have, I'll never become, that will be your truth. And that will be what you die to become. Because really, the reality is, we have got to stop allowing the lies we tell to ourselves to be our only re reason to exist. Really. 
I'm telling you now, if you are embarrassed about your credit score, <laughs> if you do you realize that your credit score really hurts a lot of what you could be doing financially? You want to act like it's not there? You want to act like it's not going to impact you? And you're going to put your head in the sand with that nonsense and continue to lie to yourself? You're going to continue to have that outcome. As long as you say, well, you know, my weight is outrageous and out of order, but I'm not going to own it and do anything about it, then you're going to continue to be overweight. It's what it is. See, this is why we don't want to own our truth because we love telling lies to ourselves. And then we don't understand that the lies we tell is the number one reason why we have what we have. If you're not in the best financial health, what are you doing right now to change it? I literally put up a workshop called Five Ways to Save and only one person showed up. How? How can that happen? I actually posted it up. Who wants to learn how to five ways to save? Who wants to learn that? And no one showed up but one person. That tells me that there's not, I know damn well you guys are not all saving five ways. I know for a fact. Because you know how I know? When I also polled the group, I asked them how their credit looks and they said it doesn't look too good. Okay, so what are y'all doing to fix it? We oftentimes sit in our misery and we don't love ourselves. Shine on loving oneself is what solo stands for. How are you saying you love you, but you will continue to live in your lack? How? How? How does that happen? How are, how are you okay with lack and you tell me that you love yourself? That doesn't, that doesn't match. So here's the thing. If you're not shining on loving yourself, that tells me that you're not being mindful of what you're saying to yourself. You are only saying to yourself little white lies and then you're acting like, well, I don't really want to own that. I really don't want to do what I need, what I need to do to get things better, to change it. I don't want to change my reality. So you want to live in lack? <laughs> is that what you are telling me? You want to live in lack is what you're telling me. Because here's the thing. When I post it up, hey, listen, there's five ways to save and more people told me well uh i can't make it well why can't you make it because we make stuff priority that we care about right isn't that true we prioritize stuff that has nothing to do with improving our lives but we'll sit there in it and be like oh well i can't do this but you can go and spend a bunch of money but you can't figure out five ways to save and take 30 40 minutes with me I don't understand that, but I'm your coach though. Listen, <laughs> I'm done ranting about it, but I'm just going to keep it a buck. If you really want to change your financial health, if you want to change your physical health, if you want to change how your life looks, you have to sit down and be honest with you. Every morning, how many times do I have to tell you? Every morning you wake up is a new take. You wake up, it's take one take two every morning you wake up it's a new take what do you see when you open up your eyes every day every morning you wake up what are you opening your eyes up to is it is it everything you want or is a lot of stuff you don't like and you're waking up to that mate you don't even like that person but you're waking up to it and in misery and then you want to say well i mean we've been together this long i might as well stay that is not love of self you wake up in the morning, You the first thing you grab is your phone to check your bank account, and you in the negative. You got all kind of NSF fees, and you don't want to own it? You don't want to change it? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. Only you can change and make the differences. See what I'm saying? But as long as you tell yourself, oh, I'm a victim, I'm in this relationship, and he doesn't really like me or love me, but I'm sticking in it because I've been with him for 40 years or 15 years or 10 years or three years. That's not love of self at all, period. How are you saving your money? Are you managing it well? If the answer is no, why not? 
what are you doing? We will spend time on Google to figure out how to find out if our man is cheating, but we won't sit down and go and figure out how do we love self better so that we can make better partner choices. We won't do that, but we'll check and see how can I, what can I do to tag his phone? How can I put a camera here and see what he's doing? We spend time on Googling shit that don't have nothing to do with really empowering yourself and making better choices. I'm just saying, these are lies we tell ourselves. We have a lot going on in our life that really doesn't add up to really being in a better state. But then we will not own the fact that the reason we have these situations and circumstances is due to our lack of being honest with self. Self Self-love act, take eight. Do not lie to self, period. You're not shining on loving yourself, you're not. If you're lying to yourself and you know damn well the way your life is looking is not to your is not to your standard, is not to your standard, and you know that, but you're gonna stick with it anyway. That's a lack of self-love, love. It is. And as long as you stay rooted in the lies you tell you, your life will never be fulfilled, nor will your life be where you really desire it to be. A lot of times we spend our time in fantasy, in yesterday or tomorrow, because we don't want to own the choices we make in our life right now impacts what we have in our life. If we're not loving ourselves, how do we expect a lover to love us? If we're not financially stable and set, how do we expect to be a great partner or a great parent. How? How does that work? That doesn't work. If you're not truly financially set and stable and able to start financially coming up with plans to figure out how do I build this wealth so that my children and my children's children and my children's children's children will be better off just because of my decisions. How? It comes down to a decision. When I post stuff and I say things to you about there's five ways to save, why aren't people calling me, inboxing me? When do, when's the next one? I want to come. Why don't, I, why don't I get that? I don't understand that. But if I told you I can give you five ways to find out if your man is cheating or not, I bet you my phone will be blowing up. That doesn't make any sense. That's oxymoron. Our beliefs and our expectations is killing the valuable, powerful lives we could be having. Real, real talk. I'm just keeping it a buck with you. I'm just being honest. As your coach, you have to sit down and you have to start getting serious about your reality. I'm not talking about your hopes and dreams. I'm talking about your now. If you don't like your credit score, what are you doing to fix it? Or do you even know the score? How about that? Because we can't fix what we don't know. <laughs> When's the last time you checked it? Do you have any credit? Do you have any savings? What is it looking like, man? You guys got to start being serious about your financial health. Do you know what that does when your financial health improves? Your physical health gets better? When you have less worry about what this bill is going to be and oh my god I got to pay this and what am I going to do about that when you get that worry out of your system and you no longer have that impacting your health guess what you have a more peaceful life trust me I'm telling you now you don't have all the oh worry and stress and I don't know what I'm going to do and this bill is due and oh my god you don't have all that but that comes with prioritizing how do I improve my financial health? How do I how do I realize that my financial health impacts my physical health, my mental health, my parenting? Did you know that your parenting is different when you got it? When your kid, I have a daughter, <laughs> and I know this is funny. I have a daughter. My daughter, when she was young, she was a die-hard love lover of books. She would come home and want at least a hundred and something dollars worth of books. 
on that little sheet she would have and mommy I want this book and this book and this book and this book and I'm thinking oh my god we're gonna have to minimize these down <laughs> well we or we're gonna have to we're gonna have to budget out these books child mm -hmm. I understand you want mm -hmm. these books but what what you have to understand is mommy is on a tight budget you feel what I'm saying but when you truly have financial health when your child comes and says, hey, mom, I want this. You're like, okay. It's not a stress. It's not a strain. It's not a, you know, it's not, it's not a hindrance for your child to have certain things they want and like. You are now able to deal with that just by making a decision to prioritize improving your financial health. It just comes down to decisions, honey. As long as we stay totally in denial i don't oh my credit score is uh oh it's i don't want to talk about it i mean it's really bad okay well, what are you doing to change it do you realize it doesn't take much to change your credit score it takes dedication commitment and time and as you improve it you will find oh my goodness my my life has changed and now i'm in a better state I'm going to post it up again where I do another easy five ways to save. And once I do that again, I hope more people show up because only one person came. And she has actually let me know that when she came, hey, I am applying what you said. And I have started saving. Hey, I'm your coach, Carla McCole. When you guys are ready to get serious and you guys are tired of telling these lies to yourself, inbox me. Because I will help you to approve, improve and get your life better and on a better track. All right, guys. I'm out of here. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept.